Alhamdulillahi wa kafa Wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa Khususan ala afdalihim wa khatamin nabiyin Muhammadin al-amin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba' Brother Chairman, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He ought to be praised. And we thank Him this day for making it possible for us to meet with you here in Kota da Mansara in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers. And in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I left my home in the Caribbean island of Trinidad more than two months ago. And I've been continuously traveling one week in Caracas in Venezuela four days in Buenos Aires, in Argentina and one month in Cape Town, South Africa in which we conducted the second international Islamic retreat for using the Quran and the Ahadith to explain the reality of the world today. We had about 31 countries present, 200 participants and we financed it with a shoestring budget. Nobody got a full plate of food. And then to Durban and Johannesburg and Pretoria and Petersburg. And then almost three weeks ago to Kuala Lumpur where I can't get enough sleep. So if I look tired and if I look sleepy, it's because I need a rest. <laughs> But while there is life, we must continue to teach with the hope and prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might accept our humble service and might forgive us our sins. Ameen. Our subject is entitled An Islamic View of the Current Arab Uprisings. We'll continue for half an hour and then pause for the Adhan. Uh, Salatul Isha and then continue again until we finish and then we have the Salatul Isha, is that alright? Yeah. Let us begin by praising our brothers and sisters in Egypt and in Tunisia and in other parts of the Arab world who have responded to prolonged oppression, prolonged suffering, prolonged tyranny, relentless war on Islam, by now rising up against their oppressors. to praise them and commend them for their courage and for the example which they set that others might follow their example and wherever in the world there is oppression the people might rise up courageously against the oppressor Having said that, we now recognize that those who rule the world are the greatest oppressors that mankind has ever witnessed. Having said that, we must also now recognize 
the little portion seems to be centered on Islam and Muslims and that they are oppressing us and waging war on Islam for a particular reason in our opinion they are doing that on behalf of the state of Israel this subject is located in the branch of knowledge that is known as Akhir al-Zaman in English it is called eschatology eschatology no one knows the subject of Akhir al-Zaman no one can explain Akhir al-Zaman without the Quran no. Only the Quran and he who was sent to teach the Quran, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, only they can explain the world today. No one else can do it. And so it is time for us to return to the Qur'an and study the Qur'an that the Qur'an might explain what is happening in the world today. For that you need not only these eyes <laughs> but you also need the internal eye not only the intellect but you need nur and nur is not sold in the stock market only from Allah it comes and Allah knows the hearts of his servant and be conscious of the fact that Allah hovers between a man and his heart to study the Quran we also need the correct methodology otherwise you will not succeed but tonight is not the night for us to teach methodology. We want to begin by saying that appearance and reality in many things connected with the world today are different from each other. And to say that appearance and reality in the Arab uprisings are also different from each other. The uprisings appear to be something positive for the Arabs. Freedom from oppression. <laughs> the reality, the reality is that Israel is smiling. because conditions are now emerging which would facilitate Israel's pursuit of its ultimate agenda. Israel wants to rule the world and so when Europe said that all that we want to do is to find a home for the Jewish people. That's all. They told a lie. No. They didn't just want to find a home for the Jewish people. 
No, he wanted to create a state that would eventually rule the world. Why must Israel rule the world? The answer is located in the subject of Akhir Zaman, Islamic eschatology. Israel must rule the world so that a man can emerge in Israel. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam described that man to us 1400 years ago. <laughs> and that man will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am the Messiah, Al-Masih. And so he was called Al-Masih al-Dajjal. Dajjal who will claim to be the Messiah. You and I know that the true Messiah is the son of Mary, Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And so this is a false Messiah. <laughs> but he was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by Shaitan. And he was programmed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by Shaitan, to impersonate the true Messiah. And the weapons that he uses are all evil. He's an evil being. Can Allah create evil? Can Allah create evil? Yes, Allah can create evil. Where is that evil? It is Al Masih Dajjal. But in order for Dajjal to fulfill his mission, he needs help. So Allah created from Banu Adam, from Banu Adam, from human beings, he created a people and gave to them a power. So powerful they are that none but Allah can destroy them. And these people also are wicked, wicked, wicked. They tell monstrous lies. <laughs> like the one that just came out of Washington. Was it yesterday or earlier today? They are Ya'juj and Ma'juj, or Gog and Magog. And they work with the Jal. And they commit Fasad. Fasad is not just a sin, it is a crime, criminal conduct, for which punishment is given here. And the Hudud gives us different punishments, but the worst punishment of all is for Fasad. And that's what they do. Fasad is that which corrupts and destroys. <laughs>